So today we will be looking at what I think could be actually be the gold mine for TBC Classic. And this farm right here could be insanely profitable. And here's the thing, me making this video won't make it any less profitable, simply because of the massive potential demand. So let's talk a little bit about which item we are mainly farming for first, and why it's in demand and how to farm it. So the main item of this video is the Flame Cap, a rare herb from Outland, more specifically a rare herb from Sangar Marsh, and it's basically the rare version of Ragveil. When you pick it up, you can get anywhere from 1 to 3 flame caps per harvest, and once again, it is a rare spawn. Now the reason why this is going to be on huge demand is simply because of the insane possibilities it has within the hardcore raiding environment, and with the parsing and min-max culture we currently have, anything that can help you achieve top DPS will be valuable. Now some of you might be asking why you should use this instead of a potion, and you actually don't have to make a decision. As of patch 2.2.3, these do not trigger the potion cooldown, they only share cooldowns with Hellstone, Mana Gems, and other herbalism items such as the Fell Blossom, and this means you can use a Flame Cap and a Mana Potion in case you need mana during the fight, or you can use a Flame Cap and a temporary DPS potion at the same time if you want to go for insane burst damage. Something to notice is that this is not only useful for mages or warlocks, it's literally a DPS consumable that every class can use, and for example being a rogue and popping blade flurry, flame cap and haste potion, at the same time can generate some pretty insane numbers. I guess the TLDR here is that flame caps are used within the min-max and parsing culture, within raiding, which we learned from Classic WoW was a massive part of the game and also a really profitable part of the game for us gold farmers, as several materials used within raiding has been really profitable in terms of farming, farming them and selling them to raiders for gold. I will also leave a link to the WoWhead comments about flame caps in the description of this video, just in case you want to see what people have been writing about it. Flame caps are not used in any recipes or crafts, so many people that don't know their true value might end up throwing them away or simply popping them while leveling or vendoring them, so hopefully by watching this video you know better than that and keep them, and sell them in later in the expansion after inflation has done its job. So where do you farm flame caps? Well, flame caps can technically be farmed in Sangra Marsh, so it's pretty simple. Level up a character, get to 17, get flying, get herbalism, get to a skill of minimum 335, then fly around Sangra Marsh and look for them. If you want a map that shows you roughly where to fly, here you go, but really all you need to do is fly around the zone and avoid flying over the big lakes, as that is just a waste of time. Now even on the beta, I noticed a lot of players were farming herbalism in the open world, so I can only imagine how competitive this will be at TBC's actual launch, and the chances of you grabbing yourself some flame caps in the open world is probably fairly small, especially if you're on a high pop server, and even more so if you're on a PvP server. Just imagine being halfway through gathering a flame cap, then getting sapped. That would suck. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and testing out some underbug stealth runs as a rogue to see if flame caps can be found inside there as well. Because even though it is technically only found in Sangar Marsh, the underbug is also a dungeon located in Sangar Marsh, and you can find rag veils inside the underbug. And since the flame cap is a rare version or a rare spawn of the rag veil you should be able to find those inside the underbug as well. So what I can tell you is that after 10 runs of the underbug, I found a flame cap in 7 of them, I found a flame cap in all of my first 3 runs, then I kinda just found them a bit sporadically, but from my 10 test runs, I found a flame cap spawn in 7 of them, so based on my very limited testing, there is a 70% chance of getting a flame cap spawn inside the underbug. Now before I show you exactly how to farm this as well as give you some tips and tricks on how to make as much gold as possible from each dungeon reset, as well as how to actually farm this as a druid as well, I want to mention that you guys can still grab the TBC gold making guide by student through the link in the description, and by using my code you can save 50% on the purchase itself. By purchasing this guide, you are getting yourself a TBC gold making guide that will keep getting updated, and you will get the updates for free, and you're also supporting me at the same time, as I get a kickback from each purchase that use my code. 
so you guys get a great product, highly relevant to gold making in TBC, at half price, and you are supporting me at the same time. Without making this speech too long, I want to quickly add some information about the guide as well. So this is a written gold making guide with gold farms such as herbalism roots, mining roots and primal gold farming locations, as well as skinning gold farms and many other different gold farms all in one place. So instead of having to watch 100 different videos on gold farming, you can simply scroll through that guide and find a farm that suits you. The guide itself is not meant to give you guys any additional guide specific information, it's more of a compilation of many good farms in one place to save you guys some time, and there might be some guide specific semi hidden gold farms coming to the guide at some point, but I can't really promise anything because the problem about trying to keep secrets about a 14 year old game is that it's a 14 year old game and eventually everyone finds out about everything. But yeah, for real, check out the guide, it's truly amazing, over 80 pages so far of pure gold making information, and remember to use code SOLHEIM at checkout to save 50%, the link is in the description. So while I got you guys watching, I want to show you exactly how to do this, even though it is technically just stealthing through the dungeon and looking for flame caps. Well first off, there's two guards in this instance that will see you in stealth, so being a rogue with the ability to re-stealth while in combat through Vanish is a huge benefit. That being said, even if you don't have a rogue, you can technically do this as a druid as well, but it is a little bit more difficult and a little bit RNG based on whether or not the mobs slow you and if you dodge a couple of attacks as well as your gear. I'm running through here in Dungeon Blues, so by having more gear than me you will have a better time, but it is doable with this type of gear as well. So what you will want to do is walk right into the two front mobs that use sprint, or I guess it's called dash, run past them as fast as possible, then when you're on the second floor you hug the wall to avoid pulling more mobs than you have to, and when you reach the end of the gate, jump into the water and use aquatic form to swim to the ledge, and when you're standing here just stand still, the mobs will have no pathing to get to you, and they will reset after 10 seconds. From there you can continue your stealth run farm just as usual, so it is a little bit more difficult for druids and rogues since you don't have distract and vanish, but it is 100% doable. But with that being said, here's another reason to be a rogue. Throughout the dungeon there is at least one guaranteed chest spawn, and this chest can be locked or unlocked. If it's unlocked you can grab it as a druid, but it is right past those guards, so once you jump into the water you can't really go back up without passing those guards again, so you need to have Vanish to actually get to that first chest spawn. The second chest spawn is towards the second last boss, so you will have to kill some mobs to get that chest, which can be difficult until you get raid gear. So yeah, some of them can be unlocked and some of them can be locked. You need to time it perfectly to get the unlocked one, as you have a small window of opportunity to get there to grab it on the first spawn, and this is where being a rogue comes in handy, because you can use distract on the patrol to extend your window of opportunity to open the chests. Rogues can also open locked chests, and these chests in general will be insanely profitable, especially early in TBC Classic, as you can find rare items and epic items inside these chests that are bound on equip, aka tradable, tradable items that you can sell for gold, those items can be weapons, armors, or recipes, and they will be worth a ton early in TBC, so that's another reason to be a rogue right there. One more thing to mention about the farm itself, or I guess I should say the dungeon, is that you can also grab some sanguine hibiscus, which everyone wants to grab 5 of for a dungeon quest, for a hefty amount of experience as well as some gold, and there's usually not enough of these in one dungeon run, to support everyone in the group getting 5 of them, which is how many each person needs for the quest, so you might be able to capitalize on that by selling them during the early leveling waves of TBC, if you can start farming this as fast as possible. That being said, the main item you're looking for and the main item of this video is the flame cap, which will be on high demand throughout the entire TBC, especially if it is in fact used for parsing in the raiding culture, so keep your eye out for flame caps and definitely farm them in dungeons like the underbunk as I've been trying to farm them in the open world on the beta 
and even on the beta I'm still able to get much more from doing stealth runs than farming in the open world, so just imagine how much competition it is going to be on live TBC servers, so get yourself a druid or a rogue and do some stealth runs for flame camps and you should be good to go for gold making. And that is basically it for the video guys, if you did enjoy the video leave a like down below, leave a comment as well, subscribe to the channel for more TBC classic content, and thank you so much for watching, I'll see you again very soon.